is Melody Beattie, and this is an audio tape on the 12 steps. Unlike my other tape on the steps, this is a meditation tape, not an informational tape. Through music and words, we'll go on a journey into a garden. We'll take a path lit by the 12 steps. These steps, originally designed for recovery from alcoholism, have become a profoundly simple way of approaching life for millions. If you're seeking relief from codependency, alcoholism, drug, food, sex, or love addiction, or if you're just seeking relief, you too are invited to take the magical spiritual journey offered by these principles. The journey begins with the decision to make it. The choice is yours. This tape isn't endorsed by or affiliated with any particular 12-step program. Listening to this tape isn't a substitute for attending recovery meetings. But this tape is a tool that can help you benefit from one of the greatest gifts available to us, the steps. You can listen to this tape in your car or in a more relaxed setting. If you're familiar with the 12 steps, you can use this tape as part of a formal meditation process. If you're new to the steps, you can use it to get acquainted with them. Or you can listen to it when you just need or want a reminder of this powerful spiritual remedy. It can help you get back on track. This tape can help take you on a journey to a place that already exists within you, that healing place of self-love, acceptance, and personal power. Although my voice will guide you on this journey, you'll find your own guide and create your own path through the garden. Let's start by taking a few moments to relax. Take two or three deep breaths. Let your mind relax. Listen with your heart. You're about to begin a gentle journey, one that will lead to loving yourself and others, one that will lead to opening your heart. The journey involves taking 12 steps that lead into a garden, green, bountiful beyond comprehension. That garden is your life, your soul. The life and soul you'll discover when you embark on the new way of life offered by these steps. Earth has so many gifts and treasures for each of us, gifts that we may overlook each day. All the available addictions, whether that addiction is to chemicals, work, food, sex, another person, or another person's addiction are excellent learning situations. They provide tools to promote our soul's growth. They take us to the garden's entrance. The decision to walk through the gate is ours. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over others, that our lives had become unmanageable. What a strange idea, this concept of powerlessness. What does it mean? People die. They leave. They go away. They disappoint us. Their process causes us confusion, pain, or fear. Life hurts at worst and may cause discomfort at best. Each belief hidden in our soul comes to the surface, sometimes when we're still children. I'm a victim. I don't deserve. I'm not lovable. I'm being punished. Life isn't worth living. 
We become afraid. We try to control that which we can't, and our lives become unmanageable. A coworker chatters too much, driving you crazy. Your lover tells you he loves you, but can't make a commitment. Your child tells you she thinks your rules are stupid. Your partner is cold, detached, and won't talk about it. Someone you love becomes addicted. You become addicted. What a hard idea to grasp this concept of powerlessness, especially when we love another so much, especially when life hurts, especially when we want so much to be loved. Each of us is so powerful. We have so much at our fingertips. When we try to control another instead of taking care of ourselves, we lose our power. We lose control. And our lives become unmanageable. How deeply we may want to do something to change the tides of time. How much we want reality to be something besides what it is. The question we face is simple. Do we stand at the water's edge, raging at the tide, telling it to stop? Or do we take off our shoes and feel the wet sand under our feet? My friend, we may need to do both. The key is the process. We each have our own, intertwined, of course, with the process of others. To attempt to stop, divert, or change the process of another is as futile as arguing with the ocean about the flow of its waves. Why are you so afraid? What is it you fear? Breathe. Breathe. Stop taking your fears and beating others over the head with them. It doesn't work. It doesn't bring healing to your fears. Unmanageability is fear. Unmanageability at any level is devastation. Surrender to the devastation. It's only for the moment. See the flower bend as the rains beat down upon it. Observe the mighty oak bowing to the raging winds. Surrender, bow, so that you might not break. Hear the cry inside that says, I don't deserve to be loved. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. I'm a burden. I've been forgotten and abandoned again. Know that the love you seek is within you and can be tapped only by loving yourself. Unheard, your beliefs will reach out and destroy all that you are all that you can become. Make a decision to stop destroying yourself at all levels. Then thank the devastation for bringing you to the garden of your soul. Quietly surrender to that which you can't change. Set it free, let it go. Then surrender also to your feelings. You are part of the universe, connected to all, but separate, separate. Honor your feelings and your thoughts. Then become like a little child, quietly in wonderment and awe, feeling your feelings, saying what you need, walking your path. Each person has a pathway through this life. You do too. The universe, the world, is here to support you, not fight you. The resistance is within you. The fight is within you. At an early age, you learned that the world was your enemy. You thought you had to fight it to survive. You did have to fight it to survive. Now you're learning a better way. You're learning to love, honor, and take care of yourself. You're allowing each person to help you learn a lesson an important one about yourself. Yes, many of these lessons have been through opposition, but some have been through love. Eventually, you'll learn that even the hardest lessons have been an act of love. Some people come to teach you that you aren't a victim. Some come to assist you in owning your power. Some come to help you be spontaneous. Some come to encourage you to begin or continue your healing process. 
Some come to help you discover and nurture your inner child. Some come to help you begin feeling again. All come to help you learn to trust and love yourself. All come to help open your heart. No longer do you need to fight the world. Stop. You need no one to make you safe. You are safe. The support, love, and encouragement you need surrounds you. Open yourself to it. You don't need to carry others. You don't need others to carry you. Stretch out your hand and walk with fellow travelers, those who have begun the healing journey. Your process is your own, but there are others to help you through. There are lights along your path when it becomes dark. The process of others belongs to them. It isn't yours. You don't need to take it on. Let go and always know that it's okay to honor and take care of yourself. You deserve a life that's manageable. You deserve to discover and heal your own soul. You deserve to respect and dwell in your own process. You deserve to love and be loved. You deserve to live in the magic of life. You deserve to walk in the garden. Feel the moist green richness of the garden. See its beauty. Know that you can choose to enter into it. Pause for a moment. Observe the flowers bright blooms of blue, peach, magenta, pink, and orange. See the full green leaves. Hear the birds sing. Smell the sweet fragrance of honeysuckle and leaves. Listen to the sound of water rushing over rocks. Feel the earth under your feet. Then feel the warm sunshine on your back, shoulders, neck, and face. Know it's God's gentle hand guiding you. You'll come to believe that a power greater than yourself will help you, will be here with you. You'll come to believe that a power greater than yourself lovingly dwells in the garden. Like the rich red rose, you'll instinctively stretch out and grow towards the light and open in the warmth of its rays. When your life is overwhelming, when you feel confused, afraid, empty, and alone, remember, you are not alone. Step 2 came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. You're so much more than you think. Within you is a powerhouse of creative energy, originality, and love. Walk down the garden path and know that you can do anything you really want to do. Did your confusion about yourself begin somewhere in your past? Someone, perhaps several people whom you trusted, told you that you had nothing to offer? They were probably well-intentioned, but they lied to you. It doesn't matter if they directly told you you were worthless, or if it was implied by subtly picking away at everything you did, everything about you. The lesson was the same. You learned to believe that something was wrong with you, and you didn't deserve to be loved. You lost your sense of self, your joy, your spontaneity. You lost your dreams. 
You lost your belief in yourself. You lost your sanity. Your actions began to mirror what others said. You stopped listening to your heart. You acted against better judgment. You panicked, felt crazy, got off track. You aren't crazy. You're beautiful, whole, insane. A complete, unique creation who's been cheated out of your birthright to a magical life. Listen to me. You've been lied to about your value. And you'll heal from all the pain you've lived through. It can be used to transform you and your world in ways you cannot now imagine. You can reclaim your sanity, your life, your vision, your dream. You can find the joy that's yours. Simply believe that God is with you. God is within you. God cares. Look into the mirror. See the light in your eyes. You don't have to do it alone anymore. God's holding your hand and will give you the miracles you need. Hold God's hand. Jump into God's arms. Climb into God's lap. Stop working so hard to change what you can't. Then God will transform you and your life. Just believe as much as you can. A moment, a flicker of belief will do. Look closely at the sun hidden by miles of gray clouds. See the golden rays filtering through. Know that the sun is there. Let the slight rays give you hope. Now watch as the clouds separate and the sun shines brightly in the sky. Just believe as much as you can. Step three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. Your heart and soul understand God in your own way. You see with your own eyes. That's how it's meant to be. How you understand God isn't nearly as important as knowing that God understands and loves you. Who do you think created this path, this garden, each flower, tree, each bird, each droplet of water. For each creation, there's a creator. Don't waste energy trying to sort through the details of how your path was created. Surrender to the idea that the path was created for you with unconditional love. Surrender to the path and the creator. Once you find your powerlessness, you'll also find your power. In love, trust, and innocence, open your heart to this path and the Creator. Open your heart to love. Don't limit or try to control how this love will enter your life. It may come wearing the face of new friends, a new job, more education. It may come disguised as a change in your relationships, finances, or a change in health. It may come as a change in you, in your attitude. It may come as a period of waiting, of inactivity. It may come disguised as misfortune. Know that change is inevitable. It's how we move forward. Change doesn't always feel like love. Sometimes change hurts. It feels frightening. It disrupts our roots. Transplanting doesn't hurt the flower. It makes room for its roots to grow deeper. It makes room for a fuller, richer flower to grow. Don't listen to your old beliefs when they say, this isn't love, this is punishment, this is a mistake. That's your fear talking. Trust that the changes will lead to love. Then let the changes gently guide you down your path. Trust the growth that's been planned for you in love. 
The flower doesn't question or doubt its growth process. It simply grows and naturally becomes a beautiful blossom. It lets itself grow, trusting each stage. It grows toward the light while its roots run deep. Surrender, then trust. Linger in the garden until you feel warm and accepted. Linger in the garden until you feel loved. Linger in the garden until you accept your present circumstances. For in that acceptance, you'll find magic. You yearned for this garden long before you found it. Your yearning has brought you here. Let yourself feel excited as you begin a new way of living and loving. You're about to discover yourself and your destiny. Be happy. Celebrate. You'll go deeper into the garden and your soul than you believed possible. The colors will grow richer and more fulfilling, more vibrant and alive with each step you take. Your task is simple. Love and trust yourself. Take care of yourself. Love and trust your higher power and let that power help take care of you. The rest will happen naturally. As the flowers grow, so will you. As you merge and begin your partnership with God, your life will begin anew. You'll no longer view experiences as mistakes or errors. You'll see that all that comes to pass is for your highest good. Events will begin to take on meaning and purpose. Purpose. Your trust will grow. You'll feel guided. All you need will be brought to you. You'll begin to live in the present moment. And you'll learn what it means to let go. Step four. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. For years we've looked at others. Now we're about to look with love at ourselves. Enjoy this process of looking within. Yes, there's pain, but there's joy too. Look and you'll find it. You'll learn to bring joy to all you do, even that which is difficult. There may be shame, sadness, anger, rage, bitterness, resentments, and many fears to face. But the looking doesn't create what you find. What's there is already there. Looking within sets you free. Do negative beliefs about yourself eat away at your soul, mind, heart, and life? Do you believe that you're a burden? that you're unlovable and unloved, unworthy and undeserving? Do you believe that you're shameful, inferior, or not entitled? You aren't a burden, but what you uncover in this step has burdened your life. These beliefs have held you back, stunted your growth, kept you unhappy. They've robbed you of joy and your birthright of self-love. Begin a new journey by looking within honestly and fearlessly. Looking is the beginning of releasing all that you don't need or want. Remember this, when we begin talking endlessly about what another is or isn't doing, we're really trying to discover a secret about who we are, about what we feel, about what we believe, about what we need to do to take care of ourselves. We're really learning another important lesson about ourselves. 
Talk about another if you must. Then let go of fear and talk about yourself. Listen and learn. Most of us fear the darkness within us. So we judge those whose darkness is more obvious than our own. We judge our neighbor who has an affair. We criticize an abusive parent. We look with disdain on the addict. It's okay to assess, but judgments only hurt us. They limit us. Each of us has a dark side, a shadow. Each of us is capable of committing any act of humanness. If you deny that, you deny an important part of yourself. You deny your wholeness. Your shadow side isn't designed to destroy you. It's here to help you see both sides, to teach you compassion, to give you wisdom, to stretch you beyond your present understanding. Each plant in the garden is part of a master plan for that garden. Some we call weeds and desire to pull out. If left unchecked, weeds could strangle the desirable plants. The same is true with your dark side. Don't tell yourself that it isn't there. Your dark side is as much a part of your own master plan as the weeds are of this garden. But like those weeds, it can grow out of control if it's ignored. To know and accept your shadow assures that it won't control you. Having a dark side is natural. Your responsibility is what you choose to do with it. Embrace your shadow. Admit your faults. Going through the darkness, not avoiding it, is how we get to the light. Don't you see? Any plant or tree that's in the light casts a shadow. But the shadow isn't real, the light is. The shadow is simply the other side of the light. It's just a temporary shifting place where light has been blocked. Don't reject or deny the shadow. Let the light in. You may have been conditioned to ignore or deny all the wonderful things about yourself. To find out who you are, you need to recognize all the wonderful things about yourself. Acknowledge, comprehend, admit to, embrace, and fess up to all that's good and true about you. Talk about your feelings, thoughts, desires, fears, deeds, misdeeds, motives, noble acts, and less than noble acts done sometimes with the best of intentions. Face your beliefs and the payoffs you receive from holding on to them. You may not think that there are payoffs, but there are. Victims get to be taken care of. Martyrs get sympathy. People who are unlovable get independence, get to be irresponsible, get to avoid intimacy. People who are abandoned get to be separate. They don't have to face things. When life has to be hard, we get to deny our pain. Go as deep as you're willing. Each time an event triggers an emotion, feel the feeling, then look within. Find your blocks and barriers and why you need to be where you are for the moment. Gently and honestly hold yourself accountable. Then watch as you become set free. Notice the eagle soaring above the garden and know that you can be like him. Begin the process of looking at, accepting, and loving yourself. When you do, your love will radiate out from you and back again. Your relationships will reflect you. Step five, admitted to God, ourselves, and another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Step five is a different step toward freedom. It's how we unlock our hearts. Share yourself with one other human being. Tell the truth about who you are. 
It's okay to stop hiding. Hold your head high and say, I will love myself through all my feelings, my weaknesses, my strengths, my humanness. I will love myself in all my divinity and I will forgive myself whenever needed. Celebrate your humanity. Perfectionism is a trick. Shame has robbed us of our joy. Let yourself, others, and God know the truth about who you are. Don't hold back. Say what you most fear saying. Take down the walls that have kept you trapped, separate, and living in isolation. Tell someone safe what you think, dream of, and feel. Your pain and your joy. Tell someone you love what moves and excites you. Share how your mistakes have affected you. There's something magical about opening your mouth and telling the truth. Tell what you feel, what you've done, what you believe, need, and desire. Tell the truth because you deserve to be free of shame, guilt, fear, secrets, and anything else that bothers you. Sharing who you are is the most healing, loving act you can do for yourself and others. Step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Get ready to release all that stands in the way of loving yourself. Get ready to let go of fear, shame, rage, resentments, terror, despair, separateness, and guilt. Get ready to let go of caretaking, feeling excessively responsible for others, and not owning your true power. Get ready to let go of old beliefs. Get ready to let go of all you don't need anymore, all that stands in your way. Getting ready takes time and commitment. Become ready to let go of desperately grasping on to people, controlling others, allowing others to control you, manipulating, negative thinking, worrying, blaming, and waiting for your life to begin. Become willing to let go of low self-esteem, self-neglect, self-rejection, self-hatred, and lack of self-trust. Become ready to face the fear, to believe, and to trust. Just become willing, that's all. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. You're not doing it alone, not anymore. All the powers that be, including friends, loved ones, your highest self, the universe, and your higher power are propelling you along your course. Releasing and letting go of all that harms us begins by becoming willing. You don't have to force change. Let yourself change. Your healing has a life of its own. Just become ready. About the time you're ready, you change. You heal. You grow. You get it. You learn to let go.